Ja, thank you. <coughs> Yesterday I made call home to my family and my and my younger son, who is only five, said, Nihao, father, how are you feeling? So Nihao is also the only word that I really know in Chinese. So Nihao, it's my pleasure to be here. And um, so let's start. Uh, four years, I worked in the field of academic affairs and uh, teaching. So probably this is a lit little bit different with many other colleagues who are working in the field of marketing. So, but uh, the most of my duties uh, were how to express and present uh, difficult and complicated topics in a much simpler way how it is possible, but at the same time not so oversimplifies that uh, uh, we just lost uh, anything that could be useful for these topics. So also uh, concerning teaching semiotics in the art academy, uh, generally most of my students are does not they, they do not need semiotics in their everyday life or everyday experience. So the first uh, two or three lectures, uh, many of them are rebellious and against these topics. They say, "Ah, oh, no! Why we need something, some, some, some bloody, some, some, some anything amusing like uh, some kind of intellectual terror that semiotic is?" Uh, but later they realize that uh, most of them. Uh, most of them realize that uh, generally they are semioticans. Uh, they are semioticans that are not theoretical semioticans, but they are practical, practicing semioticans. Because if you are artists or designers, you are semioticans per se, because you are producing something that had meaning, that have meaning, and that will have meaning in future. So, let's start. Okay, yeah. So why marry uh, such two such huge things like design and semiotics together? Uh, uh, the very very simple answer is that uh, if you are following etymology uh, of the most common usage of these words, uh, uh, and if you are consider semiotics like a uh, stands that's dealing with science, so the design and semiotics in some sense are uh, very quite uh, nearby living relatives because semioticans are dealing with science systems, but designers are producing in some sense science systems. It's not, uh, of course, uh, like uh, absolutely common uh, view, and there are some body who are uh, who uh, uh, emphasizing of this uh, connection, uh, stride connection between design and semiotics, but in the same time also uh, the same theoretical, like uh, in this example, Mihai Nadine, uh, who expressed that design principles are semiotic by nature. In the same time, eight years later, when he uh, wrote about uh, design and semiotics encyclopedia, he stated, but as product design and design products can be interpreted as science, but as products, regardless of their concrete realizations, they are not semiotic entities, but rather the result of human needs and desires. So, uh, such uh, one step further and one step back, uh, and uh, we are uh, sometimes dealing with such kind of dualities in uh, design theory. Not all of uh, design theoreticians are admiring that uh, design is absolutely uh, semiotical in all other aspects. But, of course, it's just because of the point of view, and it's uh, because of the point of view how we interpret uh, design, what we are thinking the design is, and it's uh, uh, quite... Uh, oh, oh, sorry, a little bit confused. Yeah, it's uh, quite because uh, uh, in the 90s of the uh, last previous century, the most a uh, popular view about design was that design is something that uh, uh, help us um, plan, design, and implement products. Uh, the design is uh, uh, absolutely related with uh, industry, and and this point is going through 
very, very big and crucial changes because uh, our societies, European societies, move it from industrial to post-industrial phase. And also role of designers uh, change it in a very fast way and we are nowadays uh, thinking about, uh, about design uh, in more broader sense. Design is not only design of products or graphic design or things like that, but design is also social design, service design, and uh, also many other aspects, uh, like uh, uh, in the last years, emerging branch of design, like a critical design, where design generally is competing with art, because for years uh, it was the role of art in society to be critical about some issues. Uh, but uh, happily to uh, uh, us and uh, all designers and all the semioticans who are working with design, in uh, 1968, uh, Herbert Simon uh, wrote one of the most uh, genius books uh, concerning design theory, the science of artificial. Uh, we could uh, easily say that this book is like a cornerstone about uh, uh, dividing uh, our uh, activities and duties. And he argued that uh, for years uh, um, there was some in mis misunderstanding and artificially produced things were uh, analyzed and researched in the same way like we are dealing with natural world things and so we should change our point of view. And he stated that artificial things, how to, how to distinguish artificial uh, things from natural ones things. So artificial things are synthesized throughout not always or usually with full or results by human beings. They are produced by humans. Artificial things may imitate appearances uh, in natural things while lacking in one or many respects the reality of the later. So um, some kind of influence of natural world and artificial world is like extending to this world. Artificial things can be characterized in terms of function, goals, adaptation, and artificial things are often discussed, particularly when they are being designed in terms of imperative as well as the descriptives. So, uh, language is quite important uh, during any process of design, and we should easily um, uh, admit that process of design is generally like a translation of one kind of language, language what are you being used during designing things, in the second kind of language that is being used when you are uh, marketed these things or uh, where you are uh, use it, consume it, or uh, apply it in any way, like a... Uh, uh, what's uh, uh, quite important, uh, in the same time, uh, Simon interpreted uh, design objects, or uh, as he used this name, artifacts, as an interface, uh, and uh, please, please take a... Look, it was uh, in the end of 60s when uh, the term interface was not so popular like in nowadays because of media art and media design. He used this name of interface. Of course, uh, he borrowed this term of interface from cybernetics in the 60s, but uh, uh, so the design objects are interface between inner environment, the substance, and organization of the artifact itself, and outer environment, the surroundings in which it operates. So, uh, in such a way, uh, design also could be interpreted as a bridge between scientific and humanistic praxis, as it was done by Mikhail Nadine in uh, 19, 1990. Or even we could step one step further and say that uh, design could be interpreted as a production of artificial models used to bridge man-made artificial semiotic systems in nature. So, uh, at this stage, Modeling comes in, and modeling is quite an important issue in semiotics. As we know, the uh, general public are, are expecting that semioticans are dealing with science because it's uh, like a name of this uh, uh, approach, and uh, that semioticans are spending all time discussing between each other what kind of science is better, the Eidic science pr uh, proposed by Ferdinand de Saussure or triadic science that was proposed by Pierce. Of course, Pierce is better because everybody is believing in Pierce. Uh, but uh, if you are going to apply semiotics for some 
cultural phenomenon or some phenomenon of visual culture, art, or something like that, that sometimes you could feel that science absolutely is not concept that it could be enough to describe very complicated or specific realities. And in such case, you should base probably your position on um, heritage of Yuri Lotman, uh, the head of Cultural Semiotic School of Tartu University. Tartu is also uh, from the one quite a small country. Estonia is even smaller than Latvia. Latvia is bigger than Estonia. Yeah, so, uh, but they had uh, Tartu University with this semiotic school. And uh, Yuri Lotman that, uh, uh, made his uh, famous uh, proposals about culture as secondary modeling system because he considered language as a primary modeling system and as a central coding mechanism, emphasizing modeling as a cornerstone of any cultural practices and emphasizing modeling also as a first function of language, not communication, but modeling. Uh, language as a tool you are using to mm, produce model of world we are you and we and every body of us are intended to live in. So uh, uh, this is the reason why language is so uh, rich with semantics, with heritage, with inner memory, and so on. And you could not easily switch from one language to other language without losing some kind of uh, uh, semantical important information. Why Lotman, why Lotman highlighted semiotic mechanisms of culture that could determine the two models of culture? Uh, it was and also in the 70s, uh, culture that is uh, oriented towards content and represented as a system of rules, and culture that is oriented primarily uh, towards expression and represented as an aggregate of normative texts. These two distinctions, of course, uh, were politically motivated and uh, uh, cultures that Real, uh, uh, was orientated primarily toward uh, normative texts. Of course, it was Soviet Union in, in some sense. But uh, later, of course, he, uh, in some sense, uh, combined both models. And the uh, basic opposition of the first type of culture that is organized, non organized, and its particular crisis as uh, Cosmos Charles uh, entropy. Ectropy, culture, and nature determinated the same distinction between natural and artificial worlds as it was proposed by Herbert Simon. So we could make a make bridge between attitude of uh, and proposed models of Lotman and Herbert Simons. Linking Lotman's model of culture with Simon's concept of artificial worlds provides possibility to interpret design practices as a modeling and correlate design concepts with respective semiotic models. So we easily put uh, there are such kind of model where is a system system is uh, uh, embedded in artificially produced world. There is natural world. Users are embedded in natural world. Uh, so because everybody of us are, uh, are natural beings uh, until this time, probably uh, in future we will transform ourselves in some kind of cybernetic organisms, and probably we will have. Uh, necessity to develop another semiotical models, but at uh, this time we are part of natural world, and of course design process is like an interface between both these, both these worlds. So uh, uh, at this point, uh, things are, I, I believe, quite simple, and we could uh, save, made safe stop here if we don't like to go to more complicated one place, but. As a semiotic, and I could say that uh, this is place where the old fun has started because we need to go to more complicated uh, journey, and uh, um, in order to describe and categorize uh, some uh, different kinds of models, or probably uh, elaborate some kind of models uh, in order to apply to this process, we. Uh, should need to find some way how these uh, uh, models uh, could be interpreted. And semiotics is famous uh, because of uh, tools that semioticans arrange uh, for some kind of didactic, hypothetically exercises that you could provide during research. You could easily uh, produce didactic constructions uh, using se semiotic uh, approaches. And one of such didactic constructions that could help our process of deduction is uh, 
so-called semiotic heresy uh, proposed by Jordan Zlatnev in 2009. He is um, also a member of uh, Lund University uh, Cognitive Semiotic Center, uh, close associative of uh, Guran Shunesson. Uh, probably everybody who is uh, in pictorial semiotics know him very well. And he proposed that there's necessity to uh, create some kind of uh, framework that could integrate uh, very uh, fragmenting uh, and increasingly fragmenting uh, conceptions of meaning nowadays. So the semiotic heresy was formulated. It was uh, based on three uh, roots, each of them quite complicated. Uh, 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 and uh, if we just would like to interpret them as simple as possible, the first one was a uh, tripartia uh, world concept uh, proposed by Karl Popper, philosopher Karl Popper. Uh, Popper um, um, expressed the idea that there are a physical world of bodies and physical states. It's a world where we are actually living. It's uh, like uh, Edmund Husserl uh, said, it's a life world uh, where we are, everybody living, where researchers are living when they are closing the doors of their research rooms and going and so on. The psychological world of experience and of unconscious mental events uh, it could be easily associated with a uh, semiotic world because all this uh, emotional or uh, idyllic experience uh, happening in the semiotic world. And uh, world three of mental products, uh, what he also uh, named as a uh, world of objective scientific knowledge because uh, as probably everybody who is going through university now, Karl Popper was obsessed with the idea about uh, demarcation linies between uh, usual practices and scientific practices and how to do, uh, how to distinguish them. How to distinguish. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. So, uh, uh, the second route was influenced by Peirce universal categories, firstness, secondness, and thirdness. And uh, this is absolutely a huge topic. It's underlying absolutely an anything that's, uh, connect, uh, that is concerning with uh, semiotics produced by pairs. Uh, if we would like to express in a very, very simple way what the firstness, secondness, and thirdness mean, so the firstness we could describe as some kind of quality. It was also be attributed that the first kind of uh, signs in the uh, famous topology of pairs, iconic signs, also are based on the quality, iconic quality of likeness. Uh, secondness uh, could be described as a relation or reaction. So the second type of science, indexual science, that is always reaction or re relation of some kind of objects these signs are represented uh, at this moment. And thirdness as a representation or mediation. So it's like a three-party relations uh, between subjects uh, of, of any kind, and uh, so the famous uh, seriadic sign of Pierce, uh, pro uh, proposed by Pierce, that was shown by Chris' presentation, is absolutely a clear uh, example of this thirdness. So, uh, firstness, secondness, and thirdness could also be used as an uh, interpretative you know, framework for, or for almost any phenomenon, and it was also intended in such a way by Peirce. He just uh, wished to replace uh, categories, uh, logical categories produced by Aristotle with his own. And the third, third root of the civic heresy was uh, ontologically supplemented by adapting evolutionary phenomenological semiotic aspects of uh, linguistic and the role of language as particular social institution. So it's probably uh, uh, best would be illustrated by the, uh, this semiotic heresy as such. So in such a way, as Latio constructed semiotic heresy, a methodological pluralism that allowed groping of methods on the basis of type of perspective adopted for the particular phenomenon under the studies. So uh, he grouped uh, several things like methods, uh, conceptual analysis, phenomenological reduction, imaginative variation uh, as a first person 
first person perspective. It's, uh, the most important aspect of this uh, uh, thematic heresy is viewpoint. It's like a sign at the entrance of this hall, there's viewpoint. Yeah, viewpoint is a much uh, is, a, is the most important part of all this concept uh, because uh, the first person is subjective. It's looking from its own subjective perspectives. Second person position and methods that could be like empathy or imaginative projections. Third person uh, could exper make experiments, uh, brain imagining, uh, computer law, computer, computational modeling, and so on. Uh, probably it all sounds uh, uh, quite uh, complicated, but if we apply this, I will not go uh, uh, further uh, deeper on these issues because it will uh, kick us off our very straight line where we would like to go. Uh, if we put all these uh, positions, this uh, triangulation of methods, so call it uh, from the three perspectives, which we we'll call it subjective, intersubjective, and objective, on uh, 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 such a complex phenomenon like a design, uh, we could uh, uh, um, generally at the first we could uh, manage uh, to, 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 to find some viewpoints. It's also my uh, first steps in Chinese, so uh, I, I hope that nothing is wrong uh, with this. Uh, it's okay, yeah. So I, I, I really like this uh, uh, second person um, ideographic meaning signs because uh, what I would like to convince the second person is always about communication with some other person, uh, this intersubjective person. It's very well coded in in Chinese in such case, and even in third person, look, well, we are speaking about uh, many of them, like Tamen, uh, we, we see that there are also several human figures inside this ideographical uh, sign. So, uh, it's about viewpoints, uh, and uh, the first step that we could admit is that we could not uh, just interpret uh, such a huge phenomenon like uh, design in simple way, because any simple models that we could uh, apply to any kind of complex phenomenon always could be with some uh, losses. So uh, we could uh, uh, easily say that some kind of uh, the distribution of meanings and distribution of diversity should be included in any kind of uh, system of modeling. So we sh should uh, uh, interpret design from the all three perspective. And in such case, uh, uh, if we are looking, uh, we could easily find that there are uh, three dominant concepts uh, of design in society. The first one, uh, many shared by designers themselves, is that design is some kind of uh, self-expressions. Some kind of self-expressions, and at this point it's very easy, uh, easily to confuse design with artistic practice. Because artistic practice also art is uh, some kind of self-expressions, and we could not uh, uh, um, establish any kind of limits between self-expressions in art and self-expressions in design, especially because of very pluralistic attitude nowadays uh, toward what is design. For example, in uh, uh, this, week, this, this month, I attended Cumulus meeting in um, Aveiro, Portugal. Cumulus is a uh, a uh, network of more than 200 design and art uh, higher education institutions and uh, one of our colleagues from Canada presented a case where when uh, she speaks about so-called verbal design concerning Inuit uh, heritage. So in many aspects, of course, ethnographs and philologues could oppose, they could say, no, it's about, uh, it's our field of research, but uh, designers also are brave enough to intervene uh, almost any, any field, any kind. Uh, uh, 
second concept is about design as a communication. It's also quite popular concept and, and uh, um, uh, when uh, we are speaking about meanings that it's behind uh, products produced by designers, when we are speaking about uh, uh, positions of, taken by designers in society, and uh, uh, especially uh, when we are speaking about uh, uh, several special types, particular types of design, like uh, media design, communication design, and so on, it's quite easily we could uh, speak about design and interpret design as a kind of communication. And of course, uh, in very traditional point, uh, very traditional case, we are pointing to design like uh, some kind of supplement of uh, industrial society that uh, we are expecting that designers are just going to produce uh, better and better soldable products. And, and so design is about uh, product production. So these three general conceptual models refer to three general types of design. Uh, 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 artistic design, social design, and industrial design, and design as an artistic expression of individual design, and design as a mean of service and communication. Yes, uh, I, I also should mention this uh, aspect of this uh, intersubjective methods, if we apply them to the field of design, uh, also design as part of social service, uh, because of this change of uh, general methods concerning and uh, general theories concerning design during uh, beginning of 21st century when we change our position from just uh, uh, producing some things to problem solving attitude in design so we also realize that not always uh, that designers uh, had to identify problems in society but not always these problems are better to be going solved uh, with the help of products. Sometimes uh, designers should introduce some new kind of social services, some new kind of practices, even some kind of uh, innovate, some kind of uh, social social world events in order to solve these problems. So design also became part of service, and so uh, the social design phenomenon arises. And uh, so from the point of view of objective methods, from the third person look, uh, design as part of product production and industrial design. So this two type of design, artistic design and industrial design, is quite popular. We could even mention such kind like a OECD produced manual, so called Oslo manual, concerning statistical analysis of innovations, and uh, design is define it in these two areas. And social design is also something that is just arise in the, uh, in the last you know, 20 years time. You know. It just come out and uh, many students in our academy also they are finishing their studies not by producing actual products, by uh, ad uh, advising some kind of uh, uh, services or communication, innovation or things like that. So uh, this is the first first uh, step in our triangulation of uh, uh, you need back yeah? <laughs> okay uh, so but uh, if we are thinking further of course and if we are applying this symmetrically motivated idea about modeling as a kind of uh, action and if we uh, agree with the idea that modeling is kind of uh, action what are uh, using in the very general way many uh, attitudes starting from scientific research and uh, ending with our own styling of the way how we are living, we are modeling our personal personal positions. So also designers uh, use some kind of modeling and we should go further. Uh, if we uh, against return to the first person look, we could easily admit that design is an uh, modeling of artificial systems, but what's quite important, it's modeling of individually motivated artificial systems, like in the case of art. Like in the case of art, we also are producing uh, artificial systems, but these artificial systems are not always intended to communicate with anybody else, because it's, uh, the first task for you is express yourself. Uh, uh, in the second person look, uh, design 
could be described as a collective, collective artificial modeling systems. And collective is also quite important in such case to be imposed uh, because you need to develop such kind of artificial modeling systems that could be understandable by any other uh, member of society. At least as a member of society, you are intended to communicate. So, uh, and in the third case, design as a collective modeling system, not necessarily realize it as an artificially constructed. It's like in the case of our economy and social world in general, we are using and we are producing very much things, but we are just taking them for granted. And uh, we are not reflecting, for example, why we are just uh, designing and producing cars. We are just producing cars in huge amounts. Uh, as I learned two weeks ago, uh, there are unsold cars on this planet uh, in so much numbers that almost everybody on Earth would get his own car if he would like. But uh, they are just unsold, they are just storage somewhere else. And so we are just uh, producing and, uh, things and uh, we are not reflecting about uh, their artificial and uh, constructed nature. So uh, let's go further. Uh, and uh, if you are speaking about trends, trends concerning uh, uh, design theories, so in the last, uh, at least in the last uh, 20 years, as I mentioned, this uh, design uh, turned more to problem-solving approach. And if we are speaking about problem-solving approach, we are uh, uh, tightly connected with uh, approach of research because uh, a big bone of any research is to find problem and to solve this problem. You are not conducting the research without problems and in the same time, any time in your life when you are uh, approaching problems and going to solve these problems, you are do doing some kind of research. It's not always necessary to be scientific academic research, of course, yeah, in the way like a Karl Popper state, but uh, it could be research that you are doing for your own, um, for your own goals. Such is the case of uh, contemporary design. Uh, designers should uh, conduct research, and as I mentioned before, uh, if we are standing on the positions of uh, Yuri Lotman and uh, all this tradition of modeling in semiotics that's derived from 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 Lotman, were proposals, so we could easily conduct that research also is some kind of uh, modeling. Uh, researchers are invented models that are applicated, up, up, up being applicable to solve some kind of problems, at least in the face of deduction. If we are going to a uh, tripartite research process, so the first phase is abduction, deduction, and induction. You are creating your hypothetical theoretical model in the deductive phase, and then you apply it in the real world and, and test, is it working or not. So research modeling is also an invention of individual models. Uh, in under subjective methods, construction or exploration of communication models and elaboration of general models, invention of new general models in the case of research that is being conducted toward uh, design that is being uh, mentioned as part of productions. So, uh, in the same way, we could also marry these uh, uh, approaches with most popular methods used by uh, designers to conduct their researches. In the case of uh, design research methods of uh, designers as artists, these methods are, the, are uh, borrowed from the artistic practices or something like uh, being named nowadays like artistic research or art-based research, are connected, are intended, or art process-based research. Uh, intersubjective methods are quite often based on the uh, methods borrowed from social science. And uh, concerning objective, uh, third person point of view, uh, we are explicitly me meeting with methods of engineering science that are going to be applicable. So if I'm speaking further and would like to uh, make uh, things more complicated, uh, we look back at the one of the uh, also quite important design theorists, uh, Nigel Cross. So he uh, mentioned that all design research could be uh, you know, divided in three main categories uh, 
what design stands, like a design epistemology, a study of designerly ways of knowing, design praxeology, study of the practice and process of design, and design phenomenology, study of the form and configuration of artifacts. Uh, so in the first case, it's uh, design epistemology, it's about people, it's about studying what the designers as people mean. In the second case, it's uh, uh, the study of practices, processes, how the design objects are being distributed and, and so on. In the, same, the same, third case, it's study of the design objects themselves. It also could be easily uh, frameworked by the triangulation of methods uh, described before. Uh, so, so design epistemology would, would relate to the first person view, second person view uh, would relate to the design praxeology because it's a question about uh, secondness, uh, relations, reactions, and the third person view would uh, also be at, attached to this design phenomenology when you are going to study what the, what the actual is Product, produce it and, and how it's going to be distributed and consumed it and so on. So uh, we could easily propose uh, such kind uh, of the next uh, very colorful uh, schema uh, of triangulation of design research. Uh, if we would like to make uh, this even more complicated, but not, not, not specially, it's necessary, but uh, just to illustrate that uh, semiotics uh, will provide more and more steps how to make anything more complicated and more complicated, especially if you need, uh, during your market research, to impress your consumers by showing that you could provide very complicated research and so on. Or in some cases, if it's necessary for you themselves to just identify uh, this place where you are, you could uh, use uh, so call it uh, triconic technique uh, developed by Gary Richmond. Uh, and uh, in such case, uh, this um, firstness, secondness, and thirdness, so first person, second person, or third person point of view could be also described in the stages of processes. And uh, just to uh, illustrate, if you are just uh, thinking about such kind like uh, processes themselves, you know, for example, uh, you should uh, conduct research about processes of design. So you could uh, uh, first look at the design epistemology. Uh, the second, uh, at the second point, you look at the design phenomenology. Uh, uh, exactly what about uh, objects being produced and what they are, uh, what they are themselves? And the second is uh, this design praxeology, actually process of distribution and relations. So these are logical steps that you will conduct. So also all these six, uh, all these five other from these six steps also could be conducted. But my time is, I feel, uh, going to squash me more. And uh, the last one, big, big ideas I would like to share with you. So we are just uh, returned at this idea about designers. Uh, some kind of bridge between uh, natural and, and artificial world, and especially in the light of uh, the last 10 years' concerns. Of course, this concerns about ecological uh, environment, about the role of designers, about uh, responsibility of designers uh, toward ecology and environment. This concern started uh, actually at the end of 60s and the beginning of 70s. But they became widespread notion and part of the nowadays uh, design theory almost in the last 10, 15 years time. So we could also apply this uh, triangulation of relations uh, also to the, uh, this phenomenon of relation of natural and artificial world itself. So uh, we could decide uh, that there are these three, three types of production, pre-industrial, industrial, and post-industrial, could be easily uh, uh, related to this firstness, secondness, and thirdness concepts. We could also describe it that uh, what the relations uh, were between design practices and natural world uh, during this stage. In pre-industrial stage, it was crafts that are necessary to survive in the natural worlds. Crafts uh, were 
the mine issue, uh, type of vaults was natural, of course. Uh, uh, in the industrial society, design practices as copying, extending, and improving natural vaults. It was our idea, not, not to going to ask gifts from nature, but improve nature, make better nature. And there uh, emerges this opposition between natural and artificial vaults. And post-industrial society design practices as preserving natural vaults. Its new attitude, designers should uh, think about themselves with more, uh, like a person with more responsibility. And like it was stated by Herbert Simons in 1968, the client of designer is not consumer who is going to uh, propose that he needs some kind of product or such things. The client of every designer is humankind as such. Uh, and, and every designer will bear uh, responsibility for humankind as such. And in such case, uh, type of worlds that emerge is not only natural or typical, but ecological, sustainable, artificially created world. Such kind of nature number three, because artificial world is a nature number two, if you would like to interpret further. And uh, phases of design, sustainable design thinking. It also could be attributed to these three methods, subjective, intersubjective, and objective methods. So the first case, critical self-reflections self about role of designers. The second stage, communication and manifestation of sustainable development strategies, like it was happening uh, during the last 20 years, where many uh, groups and uh, associations of designers who are concerned to all these questions emerge. And the, uh, uh, in the last stage, objective methods, in the stage of representation, uh, legis legislative measures, uh, in the European Union in case, it's eco-design directive that is going to be prepared and will become absolutely obligate. So if you are working in the field of product uh, design in, in, uh, in any other country outside the European Union and uh, you are intended to sell something in the European Union, you, your product should be in accordance with this eco-design directive. And implication on design practice is what is probably more important if you are thinking about design theory. In the first case, it's introduction of sustainable design methods. So at the uh, beginning, as design practices, designers should approach uh, sustainability as a main goal of, uh, of this task. So uh, designers could overcome this wise circle of design that it was mentioned in the 60s, when designers uh, who are intended to solve one problem later create new problems with his products that he uh, or she created. Uh, intersubjective methods could be related about uh, design as a tool of critical thinking. It's a phenomenon that's just arisen in the last 10 years when designers are, are taking, uh, in some case, uh, place of artists uh, and using design as a uh, critical uh, tool. And in the last stage, products designed and produced in accordance with sustainable design principles that uh, it's uh, like uh, uh, understandable that it should be uh, produced, designed and produced in such a way, also themselves became the manifestation of that principles. So in such case, we could draw, in the, uh, if you borrow from the second slide, this idea of design like a de plus sign. So echo design is echo plus de plus sign. So marking, echo marking of anything that we are producing. So, let the 3K take away. Uh, well, what I would like to uh, also left for your consideration, that design practices are semiotic practices in, uh, nevertheless, that uh, somebody of semiotical theoretical uh, design theoreticians are opposing uh, semiotics in design, but I think it's just a matter of uh, taste uh, if we are speaking about semantic design or semiotic design. Uh, because there are not uh, um, uh, limits that could not be or look at. Uh, um, the second one thing is that uh, Latias triangulation of methods allow interpretation of any semiotic phenomenon in cultural semiotics or in society considering three, three perspectives, which were called subjective, intersubjective, and objective determined. And the third one is that design semiotic models could be triangulated according with uh, their concepts. And uh, concepts, as you uh, so, could be uh, 
plane of variety, uh, concept of design, concepts of research, concepts of modeling, concepts of relating to ecological problems, and so on. So, thank you for your attention.